Welcome, I'm Carrie Lucina, the Director of Revenue at the Drupal Association, and I'm being joined by Tim Lennon, our CTO, and of course, Heather Rocker, our Executive Director. Um, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, first, we'd just like to um, do some housework and just saying um, you can stay informed with us throughout the year. Uh, you can follow along by reading our monthly supporter email update where we talk about all the great work that the association has been doing uh, for the previous month. You can follow along on Twitter at Drupal Asos. You can join the new DA Slack channel supporting partners. Um, if you're not a member of that yet, please reach out and we can invite you to that group. Um, and you can always contact your account managers, myself or Delana Lay. So the agenda is going to be some Drupal Association news from Heather, DrupalCon updates, and then a Drupal.org and engineering update from Tim. So first, we also just want to say a huge thank you to all of our supporting partners. Without you, none of this work would be possible. Um, and also, um, thank you to our brand new supporters. Uh, it's always really great to see new names on this list. So welcome to uh, CyberDoc, Unic, and Web Solutions Agency. And now I'll hand it off to Heather. Great, thank you, Carrie. So one of the most exciting things that we wanted to talk about today was uh, the slate of new board members that will start on November 1st and, and join our existing board. Wanted to give you a brief overview of, of who those individuals are and you can read more in depth on the blog that's on drupal.org as well. Um, sure many of you know Leslie, um, what's great about Leslie in particular is how much community membership experience she's going to bring to the board as our community elected board member. Uh, very excited that Leslie's going to be with us and excited to hear her input on how we can best support the community as we move forward. Grace, uh, formerly uh, with Microsoft in particular, uh, she was also with my child's favorite thing, which was Roblox. And she is now at MongoDB. And so she brings to us great experience in developer relations, which is really gonna help us from a strategic perspective. Owen has great experience as well. I keep saying great experience because they all have great experience. Uh, he comes to us with not only a good business background, but he's done a lot of work in the community around associations and camps. And that's a huge initiative that we wanna be better supporting as we move forward. And so from a strategic standpoint, he's gonna bring some good advice to us as we look at how the DA can support those initiatives as well. Lo Lee uh, is here in Atlanta with me. She's with Equifax. Uh, I've known her over the years for her advocacy with women in technology, but she's also got really good experience in content management and brand promotion. And so when we talk about the things that we mentioned in the Q webcast, which was around getting outside the Drupal bubble, uh, helping other people know what we do and spreading the word. She's gonna have really good input on how we can do that effectively, in particular with enterprise large end users. And Ryan, if you don't know Ryan, you should get to know Ryan. Not only is he a longtime community member as well, you may recognize that he has served on the board before. So he's been a community elected board member that has been reelected to the board um, outside of the community spot, which went to Leslie. And Ryan has agency experience, a lot of Drupal experience, and is very knowledgeable in a lot of things. And so we're glad that Ryan's gonna stay on with us. Uh, and again, if you haven't met any of these uh, new board members, most, uh, actually all of them will be at not only Drupal Camp, uh, DrupalCon Amsterdam, but uh, in Minneapolis as well. So that'll be a chance for you to say hi in person. On the road. So in an effort to get out of the office and into the world, uh, we've been doing some fun things. In particular, here in my own backyard, I got to attend my first Drupal camp. And Carol, who's our new director of marketing and outreach, flew down to Atlanta to go with me. So we got to spend time with the fine folks at Drupal Camp Atlanta. Uh, got to see how the volunteers not or only organize the effort, but how the sponsors participate. And if you haven't been to a camp event in your local area, I highly recommend it. It's a great way to not only get to know the local Drupal community, but to see how as businesses you can partner with developers and other uh, Drupal businesses in the area. And then Tim and I got to spend some time last week in the posh settings of Google. 
uh, where we were invited uh, very kindly by Google to participate in the CMS Leadership Summit. So this was not only a good opportunity to hear what's happening in CMS as a whole, but we really got good time to collaborate with other CMS leaders and to share best practices and a few uh, woes that we uh, shared with each other as well. And so everybody's got challenges. We're not alone in that, but it was great to spend time with that community and, and see how we can better collaborate. And I will let Carrie talk to you all about our group of events coming up. All right. Well, first and foremost, we will see you soon um, in DrupalCon Amsterdam. Uh, DrupalCon is happening at the end of the month. Thanks again to the support of our partners, Quony Congress, and obviously all the amazing community volunteers who make DrupalCon happen. A few things that we wanted to highlight that are happening that week in Amsterdam are the Supporting Partner Roundtable. Um, this is an opportunity for us to come together as a group to network and share knowledge and discuss different ways that we can contribute to Drupal and uh, all create more business value. Uh, we're working with a new format where we'll pre-assign groups and topics of discussion so people can meet together as a group and come prepared to dig into more meaningful discussions since it is kind of a short amount of time together. So please keep an eye out for those invites later this week. Um, there's also, that'll be followed by the VIP sponsor and supporter reception also happening on Tuesday at 6. These are all in the conference center, um, and you should have already received that invite from Kony. If you haven't already, please let us know. We also wanted to highlight that there's going to be a marketing contribution sprint on Thursday. So this is an opportunity to be a part of the team that volunteers um, to work together to create a lot of the stuff that you've seen happen around Promote Drupal. They're developing a marketing strategy and materials to help the community at large grow Drupal adoption. So if you feel like you can help and contribute and want to join in that great work, um, please find us on Thursday. Um, and then we have DrupalCon Minneapolis happening next year, May 2020. Um, a few important dates that are updated. We've uh, extended the call for paper deadline. It was originally coming up really fast, <laughs> October 16th, I believe. Um, but we want to give everybody more time to um, submit their sessions. Um, so we've extended that deadline all the way out to December 4th to give you plenty of time to participate and get involved. Um, the early bird ticket registration is still November 22nd, and then um, we'll announce sessions on February 21st, 2020. There are also a lot of ways to get involved. Um, I included this link here. I would highly encourage you to just kind of check it out since it does get updated regularly. Um, there are some speaker and session team members needed for various tracks. So if you are an expert in any of these track subjects or if folks on your teams are, we would highly encourage you to check it out and, and volunteer to, to help shape some of the content and sessions around these topics. And now I'll hand it over to Tim. Awesome. Thanks, Carrie. So um, I'd like to do something slightly different for our update uh, from the engineering side in this update, just because there's some news for the Drupal project itself and not just the sort of Drupal.org side of things and the uh, association engineering team side of things. So there's a few items that I'd like to touch on. The first one being that Drupal 8.8.0 is almost here. So the alpha window for this release begins uh, the week of October 14th. Um, so that's the point at which um, we essentially have a feature freeze on what's going into uh, Drupal 8.8. Um, and then we do the rounds of testing. Those of you who might participate in the kind of community beta testing initiative will likely be contacted um, uh, towards the end of October to be asked to participate in that process for this latest release. Um, the actual full release of Drupal 8.8.0 is scheduled for uh, December 4th. Um, so before the end of the year, we'll have this next um, minor release uh, with a, a whole slew of new features and improvements. And I'll talk a little bit about those. One of the exciting things about Drupal 8.8 .8 is it's kind of the last regular six month release before we get into the 9.0 release uh, process next June. So it's a really exciting moment. It's kind of putting the cherry on top of the Drupal 8 cake before we uh, move on to the next one. So um, that road to Drupal 9, this is a little bit uh, of a, of a uh, hard to follow image, but it's useful. If you check out drupal.org slash roadmap, you can take a look. 
Um, what you'll see is that in that December uh, release window at the beginning of this chart, that's when 8.8 is released. 8.7 receives security coverage all the way until the next release window, six months later. Um, and that six month rate of release will be both the release of Drupal 8.9.0 and 9.0. Um, and those will be essentially feature identical, except 9.0 will have the backwards compatibility break that represents what um, that next major version means. So it's really exciting times. Um, there's a lot more information about this uh, release process again on the roadmap and there will be some uh, blogs and other information coming out from the core maintainer team fairly soon. Um, one of the key things that's happened in 8.8 .8 that I'm personally really proud of because uh, my team was heavily involved um, is there was a strong initiative to create better composer support in Drupal core and to ensure that whether you started off by using a, you know, a, a tar or a zip file to download your site in sort of the old fashioned Drupal 7 way or whether you used composer from the beginning, you're not going to paint yourself into a corner if you need to later on depend on a, a different library or require a composer workflow. So beginning with 8.8, .8, um, uh, it's going to be a really clean, um, uh, easy to manage situation for people who are using Composer or not yet using Composer or thinking about using Composer uh, with their site installations. And all of the work of this initiative, which has been one of the major core initiatives, uh, all of the key work is already committed. So we know it's going to make it into this release. There's still some work going on in that initiative, but it's really just little bug fixes and some documentation changes and stuff. So we know we've hit that milestone and that's awesome. Um, so from there, I want to talk about the sort of regular Drupal.org engineering updates, but you'll notice that there's a lot of overlap here with Drupal itself. And that's because in kind of this modern Drupal 8 coming up on Drupal 9 era, um, you know, it's a services connected product. Drupal calls home to Drupal.org to get a lot of related things that it might need. And so Drupal.org, in addition to being the home of the community, is also sort of an essential service provider for Drupal itself, ensuring that that software works. So um, related to the topic above, um, we are updating the way that we package the releases on Drupal.org to take advantage of these new features committed to Drupal. Uh, again, so that whenever someone comes to Drupal.org to download, they're already ready to go with the sort of best practice scaffolding setup to use Composer in their site development in the future. Finally, uh, or actually not finally, in addition, we're also working on all of the infrastructural support for the automatic updates initiative, which is ongoing. So it's going to reach a first milestone as we come into uh, Amsterdam and the end of the year, but there'll be ongoing milestones and additional enhancements that are still needed as part of this initiative. Um, however, one of the, the key elements of all of this is ensuring that we can deliver um, trusted, secure update packages um, because as soon as we start automating anything that changes the code base of a site, we really want to be sure of that. So there's an issue you can look at if you're if you want to nerd out about security best practices. Um, but um, to put it short, we're we're using sort of uh, hardware security management, key signing, and package delivery, and validation, and automatic expiration, all the sort of cutting edge security stuff that will hopefully ensure that uh, Drupal's uh, security process is one of the most robust not just sort of in the PHP world, but in the sort of CMS world in general. Um, similarly, of course, once we have that security infrastructure, we're actually gonna have to serve the automatic update packages. And so when we're generating an automatic update, what Drupal.org is going to be doing is actually taking the current, the, the new updated version, the previous version, and generating this sort of um, uh, meta patch uh, of the difference between the two to deliver to sites through this automatic update service. So we're putting in place the infrastructure to generate that right now um, and get us ready for this uh, new set of features. Uh, finally, we're doing a lot of work in coordination with the um, sort of Drupal 9 readiness initiative, mostly led by uh, Gabor. Um, but uh, in particular, we are trying to help audit um, and provide test data to all of our module maintainers to know whether or not their Drupal 8 modules are ready for Drupal 9. And this is really exciting. There's a big difference between the transition from 7 to 8 and 8 to 9. For, an, uh, for a Drupal 8 module to be compatible with Drupal 9, it just needs to avoid use of any of the sort of deprecated APIs that we're maybe no longer using in the 9 release, which is a much easier lift. And as a result, as we started doing this automated audit, more than 40% of the contributed projects for Drupal 8 
will already work. They're already compatible with Drupal 9. And that was with essentially no effort required on the part of the module maintainers. And so we're continuing to um, uh, regularly run this. This number keeps going up and up and up um, as, uh, as the um, Drupal 9 readiness team alerts folks as to, hey, here's the, here's the major, here's the, the major reason that modules might still not be compatible. And usually it's just small little API changes that can be fixed pretty quickly. Um, so we're really hopeful actually that there'll be a lot of um, uh, almost a majority of Drupal 8 projects ready to use out of the box with Drupal 9 by the time we hit that release. Um, so that's very exciting. And there'll hopefully be more news at Amsterdam and you can follow along at the at drop is moving uh, Twitter handle. Um, I also just want to remind everyone not to forget um, when Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 uh, reach end of life, and again, some of this release information. So uh, again, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 are both scheduled to have uh, their end of life in November of 2021. So that sounds in some ways like a long way away, and in some ways like it's right around the corner, so it's not too early to start thinking about your migration strategy uh, into Drupal 9. If you're already on 8, it's going to be easy. It's not going to be significantly harder than the last then then the upgrade in a month to um, Drupal 8.8. .8. It won't be it won't be very different. If you're still on seven, you may have some more work to do. So um, there will be extended support available. So if you search for say Drupal 7 extended support, you'll see some information about the uh, vendor provided extended support beyond this timeline. But either way, we're excited for Drupal 9's release again June 2020. There is a fallback date if there was some reason why we had to push that, and that would be December 2020, but it's looking pretty unlikely that that's gonna be necessary. So, um, so yeah, just make sure to save those dates and be, uh, be ready to go with all of your own and your client sites as we continue moving forward. And thanks for your support of the engineering team. Without the sponsorship of the supporting partners, we couldn't do any of these things that not only provide value to the community and the home of the community, but also, are now increasingly providing direct value to Drupal itself. Uh, Carrie, you want to wrap us up? Sure. Um, so thanks again for tuning in and obviously for all of your support. Um, there are so many ways to stay informed, um, but we also just want to remind you that we're here. If you just want to talk, um, <laughs> give us a ring, give us a shout. Um, you know, even if you're not at DrupalCon um, in Amsterdam or Minneapolis, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so thank you again, and we'll be sharing out this webcast for everybody who can't join us um, and reach out if you have any follow-up questions. Um, we do have a few minutes where we can um, answer any questions that you might have. I don't see anything yet in yeah. the Q&A chat. If you're looking for that Q&A function, it's again in the Zoom toolbar among, next to sort of the where the mute buttons and things like that live, there's a Q&A button to open that window if you wanna ask any questions, um, or if you wanna just drop any more, more casual comments and thoughts, you can also use the chat window for that. One thing I wanted to throw out too, which is me asking a question uh, of this group, but it, you know, along the lines of us being out and about and advocating for Drupal and, and growing awareness, if, if you as a business have ideas about where you think Drupal should be, where the DA should be, where should we be speaking, what events should we be attending that you think would help not only the DA community, but help your business as well. Let us know because we'd love to partner and, and be able to attend more things and, and get out there. But sometimes you're the best, you know best where we should be and what would help. So send, you know, send those ideas to either Carrie or Delana. Uh, feel free to reach out to me as well. I'd love to hear from you. Awesome. I think we're still quiet on the questions front. Carrie, do you want to give it more time or shall we call it here? Yeah, I think we can probably call it. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Right. We really appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.